Hello and welcome back to the Hudson Hangout. Today I'm interviewing Matthew Del Negro. Matthew is a working actor who has appeared on many TV shows and movies, including The West Wing, The Sopranos, Scandal, and currently on City on a Hill on Showtime. He also has a top-rated podcast called 10,000 Knows and most recently released a book of the same name. Hi, Matt, and thank you for coming to the show. Oh, Hudson, I am really psyched to be here. I, I want to say before we even get going, I am so impressed with you. I think it's so cool that you're doing this, and I would never have had the courage to do this when I was your age. So right off the bat, I am, uh, I'm in awe of what you're doing. Thank you. Now, let's get this interview on way. When did you decide you were going to become an actor, and did anyone tell you not to be an actor? Uh, well, I kind of came to it uh, a little bit later. I was not, you know, a lot older than you are right now. Um, I was in college, and uh, I was I played sports my whole life growing up. And I was playing a sport in college. I was playing lacrosse at Boston College. And um, it was about halfway through my college years when I was on a trip in Italy and um, started doing some journal writing and uh, started to realize that maybe there were things that I wanted to do other than just playing sports and um, ended up stopping playing lacrosse and going out for a play. And I did one play and I said, this is it. This is what I'm going to do. And um, people were a little bit shocked. But I don't know if anybody told me not to do it. But I think people were a little bit surprised because it seemingly came out of nowhere from, from what I was doing before. The name of your podcast in, bo in book is 10,000 No's. I assume that is because you get told no a lot. How does that feel? I have tried to get many people some of them are the soup nazi no titus burgess said no um niall rogers said no dr fauci said no ben wishaw said no well yeah so then you're in the same boat as me you get told no a lot too uh the way that title uh came from some a conversation that happened now it's kind of a long time ago um a friend of mine who's another actor uh who i had done a play with in new york his father was out visiting him in los angeles and at the time i think this was 2012 he asked me how it was going as an actor out here in los angeles i said it's going well um you know it's not uh, incredible but i'm making a living and um I said I get asked to go talk to a lot of uh, programs in Los Angeles where these uh, people that are getting their masters in fine arts, which is just uh, kind of a uh, grad school to become actors, they're about to graduate. And I would go talk to them about being a working actor. And I started to say to them, basically, I'm told no for a living because that was true. I mean, every day I hear no, I, I, I hear it sometimes multiple times a day. So I said to them, when you guys graduate, you're going to go out into the real world, you're going to be told no for a living. So I told my friend's father this story. And he asked me, how many no's have you heard? And I had just read a book. Do you know who Malcolm Gladwell is? Have you ever heard that name? Okay, well, he wrote a book called Outliers. And in it, he talks about something that he calls 10,000 hours. It's the 10,000 hours theory, which is like you, you're putting in your 10,000 hours right now. I just, I can't even imagine how good you are going to be at podcasting when you're my age, if you're still doing it, because you're putting in all this time, all this practice, right? And so I said to him, I had just read this book and they talked about that. And I said, when he asked me how many knows, I said, well, let me see. There's 52 weeks in a year. There's five days in a work week. I've been doing this for a long time. At that point, it was already probably almost 20 years. I said, I don't know, 10,000 knows. And we kind of laughed. And at the time, I just laughingly, jokingly said, oh, that will be my my biography someday, the Matt Del Negro story, 10,000 knows. And as it turns out, a couple of years later, I started a podcast called 10,000 knows. And then 
a book deal came from that. And now I actually have written a book called 10,000 No's. So kind of funny how it works like that. <laughs> yeah, for sure. That's like, I was on my a walk one day when I came up for the idea with this. And I was like, I want to interview Run DMC or a Daft Punk person. And then about a year later, now I have already a season and a couple episodes of a whole interview show. It's so cool. Are you having fun? Yeah. What's your favorite part? The interviewing part. The interviewing part. Yeah. The other stuff can be a lot of work, right? Putting it, getting it and scheduling it and putting it out and all that stuff. I have to make all of this. Oh my God. For every single person I've done. That's incredible. You know what? You must be an awesome student. <laughs> Are you a really good student? Am I, Mom? Must... Am I a really good student? My mom says, yes, I am a really good student. Yeah, I had a feeling you might be because you're very <laughs> prepared and you're uh, very enthusiastic. I love it. Thank you. You're welcome. Why did you decide to start your podcast? Well, um, because I was getting some no's. Uh, I <laughs> was working on a show and uh, I thought I was going to be on that show for a lot longer. And out of nowhere, they kind of stopped writing for my character. And all of a sudden, I was out of work. And uh, as an actor, when you're out of work, you audition for the next gig. So I was going in for auditions, and I was uh, feeling good about my work in the audition rooms, but I was not getting hired. So um, no matter what I was doing, it didn't matter that I felt good about it. No one was hiring me at the time. So I said, okay, I am sick and tired of waiting for someone to hire me for me to be able to be creative, for me to be able to express myself. And I had a friend who had a podcast. I listened to it. I started listening to podcasts and I thought, oh, I like this just like you. I like talking to people. I like that these are real conversations about something. And I thought that I knew a couple of cool people in my life that I could probably twist their arm to come sit down with me. And that's what I did. I just, I started the podcast in, uh, in uh, July of 2017. So a few years ago, you know, so that's why. Nice. How did you balance doing a podcast when you have acting roles? How do you balance all that stuff? Um, so uh wait now i lost where i was which was um how do you it? balance do doing balance? the podcast with acting roles yeah well you know what i think uh organization has something to do with it and um and also just the desire to do it and what i do is sometimes um if i know i have acting work coming up uh, but i'm not at the time working, I'll do a lot of interviews and I'll bank interviews so I could be three months out, right? Right now I have interviews, uh, you know, that are lined up, like that are already, I've had the interview, I've had, I've done the conversation and it won't come out till uh, May. And that's just because when work comes up, um, I get completely focused on that. I can't do as many interviews. Um, uh, and then there are times even this fall where I was working, I was in New York for a long time, uh, working on a TV show, and there's a lot of downtime as an actor. So so there were times where I was able to schedule interviews. And as again, like, like same with you, uh, if you're organized, you can do your work as an actor, and you can also do your podcasting work and you can, um, you can manage more usually than than you probably think you can. Mm -hmm, I bet. How do you, can you tell me a, a, a moment of a blooper while filming or something like a blooper or an embarrassing moment while filming something? Hmm. Let me think. It's, it's definitely, uh, nothing comes to mind right this second, but there definitely are. Um, hmm. It's a great question. A blooper. Um, well, I mean, I'm trying to think of something. This last job that I did was was 
pretty serious. Well, I guess there was a sh there was a show that I did called uh, Huge in France, and um, it was a comedy on Netflix, and it was a really uh, very funny writing. Um, and I can't think of anything. Uh, right now, nothing is jumping into my mind that's specifically a blooper, but there were so many laughs on that set because the situations were really, really funny. And there's a lot that's captured for the show that you end up seeing on Netflix. But there's also there were times where we were just you know, you do something that might not make it into the show, but it you're just dying laughing on the set. And uh, it's kind of fun to do a comedy. I don't do as many comedies, um, but that that one, it was fun because, uh, you know, with a drama, if you do your job well, people kind of stay away from you because it's very serious. And if you do a comedy and it goes okay, people come up to you and say, oh my God, that was so funny. And so it's kind of a light, there's a lighter set in between the the two takes. I know I'm not really answering your question about a blooper. I just can't, nothing, nothing really noteworthy is like coming up to me right now. Okay. Can you tell me about your worst gig and your best gig? Hmm. Uh, I mean, God, you know what, Hudson, there have been a lot of bad ones. There have been a lot of bad ones and there have been a lot of good ones. Um, I would say, I don't know if I would name a particular gig that I would say that's my worst gig, but I'll tell you the, the things that I don't like on a gig are when people are just, uh, they're not, Remember I told you you were enthusiastic about this? I love that. Um, I hate it when I'm on a job where people are like, oh, 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 and they're going through their job and they're going through like they're, you know, sleepwalking and they're not excited to be there. And uh, those jobs for me, even if you're making money on them, they're not fun. Um, on the other hand, like that job huge in France that I told you about where we're having laughs or some of the dramas, you know, uh, I've done some really been very lucky to do some shows that you're probably too young to know, but the Sopranos and the West Wing and the show called Scandal and they're just, they're, they're great. They were great gigs because the people I was working with really cared about the work and when that's the situation when even even if it's a little independent film but people really care about what they're doing i have fun so those are my fondest memories mm -hmm. if you could work with any actor living or dead who would it be hmm. that's a great question <sighs> I don't know if I could really honestly answer that, but I could tell you um, there's so many. I mean, I think. Give me your uh, top three. I mean, I would say Christian Bale, I think, is amazing. Meryl Streep, I think, is amazing. Um, Gene Hackman, I don't know if you know him, but he's coming to mind. He's a guy that's uh, you, you, you probably, you know, you might. You might recognize him from something you've seen, but you might not. He's a little older now. But what I love about him is he's just, uh, there's, you can't catch him acting. He's, and do you know what I mean when I say that? Does that make sense? Have you ever, have you ever seen something where you feel like someone's obviously acting and almost overacting? And then sometimes you see a show and you go, huh, am I just watching the actual person? Is that even an actor or is that really the guy? That's what Gene Hackman's like. He's uh, he's so real. And I, I personally like that style. So he would be a guy I'd love to work with. Mm -hmm. If you hadn't become an actor, what might have you become? Well, for a long time, I was thinking that I was going to become a lawyer. That's what I kind of, when I didn't really know, uh, my father is a retired lawyer now um, and my mom's a teacher and I liked the way my dad talked about the law. He talked about the law uh, very much the way I talk about acting, 
which is you get in you with as a lawyer, you get behind your client and you defend them to the court within the letter of the law. As an actor, my job is to get under the skin of the character I'm playing and defend their point of view to the world. So it's kind of a similar thing, but for me, it's more fun because I get to do all different kinds of worlds. I get to, you know, pretend I'm a cop or a fireman or a, uh, you know, uh, or a lawyer. Sometimes I've actually played lawyers, but that, that was the other thing that I thought of. And then, and then, uh, and then I found acting and I thought it was much more exciting. Mm -hmm. Sounds very much more exciting than being a lawyer. <laughs> well, because don't lawyers just sit there all day like, well, it depends what kind of lawyer. If you're a litigator and you're working in a courtroom, you do a lot of the same things that an actor does. You have to get up and present your case to a jury of 12 people who are deciding on the fate of this person who may or may not have done something. And there's a lot of acting involved, actually. It's not, it's not as far off as you might think. Okay. Where can we find you online? Where could, oh, okay. So uh, you could find the podcast and the book and all of that at 10,000nos.com. That's just 10000nos.com. Uh, you could find me at matthewdelnegro.com. You could find me on Instagram at Maddie Dell, which is M A T T Y D E L. And you can find the podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. It's called 10,000 Knows How to Overcome Rejection on the Way to Your Yes. That, that pretty much covers it. There's a couple other places, but I'd say that's the main one. Thank you for coming to the show. Hudson, thank you for having me. I think you're awesome. And what you're doing is really, really cool. And um, I, I think you should be super proud of yourself for, for doing this. I mean, you've had some cool guests. I saw a couple of your interviews. How do you get your guests? What do you do? What do you do? Do you strong arm them? Do you tell them you're going to arm wrestle them? Uh, some of the people we know, mainly most of the people we e either email, Facebook, or Instagram. Well, I'll tell you what. Let me tell you something. I, I was somebody around here told me about you, and I said, oh, let me see. And I went and I looked, and uh, we actually share a guest. You interviewed Jeff Lipsky, and he's been on 10,000 No's. Photographer Jeff Lipsky, he's a friend of mine. And, That's cool. Uh, I, yeah, I looked and I saw a couple of your interviews, and I thought they were really, really great. I think it's just, it's just so cool that you're doing this.